Because Jesse, Cassidy, and Tula continue the quest to find God, we are given the backstory of an unexpected character in another fantastic episode. Hey guys, it's Cameron for Preacher, Season 2, Episode 2, Mumbai Sky Tower, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode, especially after that fantastic premiere, which was just so fun and so different, and just looked like it was going to be just such a ride, just, just such a fun ride of a season, something that I was absolutely really looking forward to. And uh, I was really hoping this episode would, in fact, keep up the pace. And from the looks of it, it definitely seems like that's the case. This was another amazing episode. I really love what we got here. We had some fantastic action. We had some absolutely hilarious comedy. And we had the return of a really unexpected character. I really was not expecting what we got in this episode. But I think it only added um, to the story. It's clear the Preacher's trying to tell a smaller story this season, which I think is really benefiting them from doing that. But... Let's just get into this episode because I definitely do want to get into it because a lot really did go down here. And I loved the way this episode starts. The opening to this episode is maybe the best opening to a Preacher episode, I think, since episode 6. Remember episode 6 where Jesse found out about Genesis and all that stuff? This, to me, is the best opening since then. So, ignoring Genesis, basically, we know how the last episode left off where the cowboy, you know, um firing at Jesse, but we see very quickly that that is definitely what's going on. It's not a dream. He fires at Jesse just as a van goes between them, and the bullet then hits the driver, killing him, and the van then swears around and hits the cowboy, but uh, the cowboy is not really affected by this, so Jesse's able to walk away as the members of the Gun Association convention run out, which, again, just such a funny scene. They literally all have their guns out, and uh, Cassidy comes out to find Jesse as the cowboy shoves the van back, and calmly steps out, and he advances on Jesse, who uses Genesis to make the gun aficionados open fire on the cowboy. He shrugs off the hall of bullets, and they hit the van, and it explodes, and they figure that, um, basically that the cowboy is dead, and they cheer, but the cowboy actually rises out of the smoke, which I loved when the crowd realized he was actually alive, and, uh, he lets the bullets drop to the ground, and there's so much great stuff going on here. I've, I've noticed this is something that Preacher's really playing well. There's just a lot of background physical comedy. It's great. I mean, there's one guy who he gets his arm shot off, and he goes to a vending machine, and he wants to get, I believe, a Coke, but he gets a Sprite instead because he's just so angry, and he draws his guns, he opens fire the aficionados and Jesse's telling them to run but they're just not listening I mean they're just too focused on shooting at him and Jesse and Cassie and take cover as the cowboy guns down the aficionados and Jesse wonders where Tulip is obviously that's his main concern uh what the hell is happening to Tulip because Tulip is still in the motel room and she's actually watching TV when Jesse runs in and yells that they have to go and basically in this episode they actually do find out about the destruction of Anvil remember Anvil was in fact destroyed um, it was completely decimated by that, uh, you know, um, nuclear bomb or whatever in the, in, in the finale, and Jesse sits down with her to watch, and a bullet hits the TV, destroying it, and the trio then hides in the vending machine area, and the cowboy then walks past them, gunning everyone in his path down, and, you know, he doesn't care who he is, as long as he finds Jesse, that's what matters to him, and Jesse tells Tula that Genesis, unfortunately, doesn't work on him, because Tula's telling him, look, wouldn't now be a good time for Genesis, but Jesse's telling him it's, he's just in effective so um and i think that really does heighten the stakes is the idea that the cowboy you know he's above genesis like he's just that powerful and Cassie then lifts Tula up to pry, uh, he pries to open a window, and a man comes in and buys a can of pop, and Jesse then motions at him to be quiet. The man complains that he got the wrong pop, which, like I said, just such a funny scene. The cowboy then hears the man and walks toward them, and he enters the room just in time to discover that they've actually fled, and he knocks out the man as they drive away. He screams in frustration, realizing that they actually did get away for now, but I really am loving the way that this battle is already, um, progressing. I love that we're finally getting this confrontation here. We've been waiting for a long time to see these two actually go head to head. And the fact that we're already getting it, I couldn't be happier. I love the way this is going. Like I said, I think this was probably the best opening of Preacher since episode six. And I absolutely loved uh, what we got here. I thought this is definitely um, one of the best action scenes we got. Had some fantastic comedy. And it really does show how much uh, better the pacing is this season. How much better the characters are this season. How much the show is increasing the stakes um of this season.
So the next morning, they stop at a gas station, and Cassidy tries to work out what happened, because a lot really did go down. Mike isn't answering the phone, and he offers his condolences about Anvil. Obviously, they don't know that Mike's dead, but he knows about Anvil, and Jesse figures that they'll never find God while the Cowboy's after them, because the Cowboy's always just gonna get in their way, and Cassidy then sees a family wearing amazing Ganesh t-shirts, and uh, as we know, in the last episode, he saw something on the TV about Ganesh, and I didn't realize this, but Cassidy was, like, really shocked about whatever he saw, and he tells Jesse that Ganesh might actually know what to do about the cowboy, and I'm like, why would Ganesh know what to do? What does this have to do with anything? So, we then cut to a couple of days ago, and uh, it's crazy thing all this has happened like, the span of a couple days, but a shuttle finally comes for Fior. We see, yeah, we actually see Fior is still alive. DeBlanc, for whatever reason, is not, because uh, as we know, when Fiora DeBlanc die, they just rematerialize, and, uh, that's pretty much what ends up happening, but it doesn't seem like that happens for DeBlanc anymore. Fior's all by himself. He, t they, um, a shuttle takes him to Las Vegas. He enters a casino, which is the Mumbai Sky Tower, and he gets a hotel room and hangs himself. And obviously, he can't die, though. He's reborn in a new body, comes out of the bathroom, puts a plastic bag over his head and suffocates himself. He then hires a prostitute, pays her after sex, and shoots himself, and he's reborn yet again. And this entire montage, uh, was just so dark funny the way that he would just come back I mean you kind of feel bad for me as you can tell that he does want to die but at the same time it's just it's really funny to just see him come back completely fine while the blood or whatever is dripping down and he goes to the casino he electrocutes himself with the singer's microphone who's singing the song that's life and he just comes back to life and everyone applauds figuring that you know this is just a magic trick and that's all it is so he soon becomes a magician called the amazing Ganesh which makes sense why Cassidy was so um shocked when he saw Ganesh because he sees that holy shit Fior is actually still alive and Ganesh then kills himself, he comes back to standing ovations, and, you know, he's, like, caught, he's sawing himself in half, all this kind of stuff, so he's really using this regeneration um, to his advantage, and I think it's just a lot of fun to watch, the crowd not realizing that's all just an act is really fun, and, uh, it honestly got me to care for Fior more, because I'm going to be honest with you, Fior and DeBlanc I thought were fun characters, but did I really care for them at an emotional level? No. To me, they were just very characters that were just there for plot's sake they were there to find jesse you know to, to take genesis from him and all that stuff um but now that that's over now we can actually give fior a good backstory and they actually do a really good job with that here because jesse tulip and cassie they arrive in las vegas and they visit ganesh and they realize ganesh is in fact fior and tulip then tells him that they've got it and goes to get a drink and Cassidy asks how they left things with Fior, and Jesse claims that it was good, which it really wasn't, as we know. I mean, they were about to leave, if you remember, Fior and DeBlanc, if I remember correctly, they were just going to leave because they didn't get what they wanted out of Jesse. But in Fior's dressing room, the angels then glare at them, and his assistant, Frank, tells him that he has a visitor show, and he, after he leaves, Fior tells Jesse and Cassidy that DeBlanc is dead, because Jesse wants to know where the hell's DeBlanc, and Fior lets him know very well that's not what it is, and the fact that Jesse's calling him DeBlanc, I thought was actually really interesting. Uh, it was funny, but at the same time, it shows that they're irrelevant to him, like, Jesse didn't care who Fior and DeBlanc was, and I'm not gonna lie, I myself got confused by who Fior and DeBlanc was, because they didn't really specify very well so now you know he can actually be like oh yeah I'm actually Fior and Jesse explains to him that the cowboy is actually after them and asks for information and Fior tells them that the cowboy is the saint of killers that he's a beast straight out of hell and he wants to kill Genesis and Jesse and Jesse thought that this was just simply a myth but Fior lets him know very well that that's not the case and Fior is the only one who can actually stop him because he in fact hired him and he might be the one to be able to take him down so uh, the fact that he actually has to um, work against the Santa Killers that was very interesting and Handicap Boy then arrives, Fior brightens up and takes photos with him and the boy then asks how Ganesh dies and he comes back and comes back to life and Fior refused to tell him. Once they wheel the boy out, which I thought was a really touching scene the way it was done, but also, again, darkly comedic, Jesse then asks what he offered the cowboy in return for killing him, and Fior refused to say, tells him to use Genesis and just see what happens, and Jesse realizes that the cowboy is tracking Genesis' use, and he explains that God has gone missing. He realizes that Fior doesn't know and says that things have very much changed and that they're all on the same side, and if the cowboy isn't stopped and Genesis is destroyed, then they'll never 
never find God, obviously. The cowboy won't, and it makes sense why the cowboy is so, um, intent on destroying Genesis. He doesn't want them to find God, because he's, of course, from hell. And Fior says that he understands that it's serious, and admits that he doesn't know exactly what happened to him. You know, why he used to be happy until he got to Earth, but now he just doesn't give a shit. And I love it, he tells him very well, look, I don't care, I don't want to help you, you know, I, I don't care about this anymore. And Frank then comes to get Fior for his next show. Fior goes with him, and Jesse realizes that he's not really of use to them. So again, they took a character that I didn't really care much about, and they actually made him a lot more interesting, a lot more compelling. And what they do with Fior is one of the best things they've done this season. I really love the inclusion of Fior in this episode. I think it honestly really made me like his character more than I did uh, before. So Jesse prepares to go out and just beat Fior, and then use Genesis to bring the cowboy there and make Fior call him off. And Cassidy warns that the cowboy's just gonna shoot at the casino if he does that, so it's a really bad idea, and suggests that he actually have a crack at him. So he misses he's screwed up before, but insists he has a skill set and says that it'll take him two hours and 45 minutes. And Cassidy in the walks out as Jesse wonders what exactly he's gonna do. I mean, how's he gonna do this all? So Tulip's been sitting in a lounge, and Jesse then sits down with her, and uh, we get this really great scene with Tulip, which I really love. I love that they're not just focusing on this plot. They actually are taking the time to talk about the people they lost in Anvil, and she explains that Walter was really the only family that she had left, and that he was always drunk and uh, falling off things, but he wore a suit when he came to her school, and he did it for her. You know, despite all the things that Walter did wrong, he still uh, stuck it out, and he still came to her school, and Jesse tells her that Cassidy's working on things, and asks if she wants to hit the tables, you know, he's just focused on um, trying to, you know, he's just focused on trying to maintain a relationship, and Tulip points out that their town blew up and suggests that they get a room, and they make love, and Tulip wonders that they're still looking for God. So this very well shows that, yes, obviously, she cares about Anvil uh, blowing to bits, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter to them because they're not in Anvil anymore. They're in Las Vegas, and they're completely fine where they are, and basically... Jesse tells her that if Cassidy gets the Cowboys off their backs, they'll continue the search, and uh, then they will be able to continue the search, but as long as, as long as they get the Cowboy away. So Tulip wonders why it matters since their hometown is gone, and Jesse says that it's more important to get answers from God than ever, but he doesn't know exactly where to look. Like, where could have God have, uh, you know, um, where, where could he have fleed to? So Tulip assures him that he'll figure something out, and Jesse suggests that they get married. Just randomly, he brings up this idea that, hey, why don't we just get married and basically because you know they're all they're uh they're all that are left of anvil and he spotted a wedding chapel in the lobby why not just take the time to get married and uh fior then returns to his dressing room he finds cassidy waiting with a table full of drugs and uh you know some shit definitely is gonna go down i love the way that was done there but Tula then slaps Jesse, points out that he hates marriage, why would he ever bring up something like this, and he reminds her that she's the one who thought that, that she, she's the one who hates marriage, and admits that it was just a thought, and Tula tells him it was the worst marriage proposal that she's ever heard, and clearly she's not into the idea, so... Cassidy explains how he plans to torture Ganesh, and Ganesh insists that he's not going to change his mind about helping. No, you know, there's nothing he can do to change that. He just he not, wants no part of it. And the vampire says he just wants to cheer Ganesh up and assures him that he'll make his next show. And Ganesh agrees, and Cassie then shoots him up. And we see Ganesh then dies, he comes back, and Cassie figures that he should use heroin next time. And they're soon chasing around Ganesh's sweet kicking beach balls, and he rants about how he and DeBlanc had a legendary friendship, and Cassie offers him another speedball, and the angel discusses theology with Cassie as they throw a frisbee, they're pillow fighting, they're discussing foreskins and face cream, I mean this entire montage I just loved. This is the kind of stuff that we needed more of in season 2, and... The fact they're giving Cassidy more to do, I'm very happy about. I think he just works really well as that fun comic relief, and I love that. I love the dynamic between these two. It's just a lot of fun to watch, and it was some of the best stuff in this episode, definitely. So... Jesse and Tulip then go to the temple, they take a pager, they wait at a bar, and they agree that it's good crazy, and Tulip then sees a man across the bar looking at her, he turns away, and Tulip tells Jesse that she's gonna change her shirt, so she goes after the man as he goes into an elevator, and she runs up the stairs after him, she loses him, goes to her room, and the man, Gary, then arrives at her door, greets Tulip by name, and uh, obviously this is someone that Tulip is in contact with, we don't know who this is, but again, this is very intriguing for where her character could go. 
So at the bar, a customer talks to Jesse about how Sinatra compares to the current crop of singers, which I found kind of funny considering that the way we were introduced to Fiore in this episode was through a Frank Sinatra song, and Ganesh and Cassie then comes in, and Jesse tells Cassie that he's figured where to go next, and Cassie says he's convinced Fiore to call off the cowboy, and uh, I just, I loved all the stuff that they were doing there, building the forts, and taking bubble baths together, I mean, all that stuff was hilarious, and Jesse tells Cassie that he and Tulip are in fact getting married, and Cassie says that it was meant to be, he knew very well this was going to happen, and in the motel room, Tulip then asks how Gary is, and and he says that he's extremely well. Tulip then invites him in. Clearly, this is someone that she's known, because Gary explains that Victor sends him from Louisiana to Las Vegas to check on things, and he asks what's up with Jesse, and Tulip says that Jesse is just someone she's working with, and Gary looks around and notices the messed up bed, obviously from when they just had sex, and tells Tulip to get in touch with Victor because he's looking for her, and Tulip says that she's been meaning to do that, but Gary then holds out his cell phone and suggests she do it now. She angrily says that she has a thing and can't do it. It's just not gonna work, and she asks Gary to give her a break. He warns her that Victor, uh, he warns that Victor wouldn't understand and tells her to make the call, so we don't know what this is all about. There's clearly something been going on with Twelve that we don't know, but she refuses. Gary says that he will. She knocks the phone out of his hand. He picks it up, tries to knock it out of his hand. He grabs her by the throat, discovers that there's actually no reception, walks around the room trying to get some bars, and he drags Twelve across the room, and she finally grabs a pager, hits him over the head breaking free and Tulip says that she can't do it today and Gary tells her that he's gonna kill her they fight Tulip smashes the phone she beats Gary unconscious and Cassie then comes in wondering what the hell's going on and Tulip tells him not to tell Jesse as the pager does go off so there clearly is something very dark that she's hiding from Jesse that we just don't know about and I honestly love this I think it really does heighten um interest in her character. Like, I've always cared about Tulip. I've always, you know, relatively thought she's one of the best parts of the show. Um, what they're doing now, though, is getting us even more invested into her as a character. I already was, but this is just making me even more interested in her. What is this really all about? What is she hiding from Jesse here? Uh, you know, what does Gary want from her? Why does Gary want to kill her? What is all this stuff about? We don't know, and... That just makes me more excited to see really where all this is going to go. So, in the wedding chapel, a Hindu priest then performs the beginning of the wedding ceremony with Fior as the best man, and Ganesh basically assures him that Jesse, that he can call the cowboy off, but insists that he can't use Genesis again, unfortunately. He's just not going to be able to do it because, again, the cowboy can track it. So, the angel then reminds Jesse that Jesse actually sent Eugene to hell, and says he's never going down there again to get the boy. It's just, that's not going to happen. You know, Eugene's there for a reason, and Jesse admits that Genesis isn't just a toy, and I, I think it's very interesting that we found that out, that basically, you know, the next time he gets Eugene, he's, he's gonna stay there forever, he's not gonna be able to get him again, so he says if he can use the word to find God, then he will, in fact, use it, uh, but only if he can do that, if he can find God, then he can use Genesis, but until that happens, then he can, he can't use Genesis, which weakens Jesse, which I actually like. I like that Jesse can't just use it. He actually has to be careful with it, and Fior warns him that it would be a big mistake, and Jesse figures that Genesis was actually meant for him, and basically that, you know, he needs to use it. Basically, you know, this was something that he was supposed to use for himself, and that it was given to him uh, for a reason. It Children comes in, says she's fine, and tells Jesse that she's changed her mind about getting married. And she says the fact they love each other is all that matters. Jesse wonders what they do now, and Tulip tells him that they should continue looking for God and confirms that Fior is going to help them. So she goes to get Cassie so that they can leave. And again, there's just something dark that Tulip is harboring that we don't know about. And again, that's made me very interested in seeing where that's going to go. So later, Cassie thanks Ganesh for getting them a car. He says he'll call him later. They hug, and Ganesh leaves. And Jesse then comes out, asks Cassie if something happened with Ganesh, and Cassie insists that nothing happened. He gets in the car, which of course we know that something did in fact happen with the heroin and shits, and... Ganesh then wishes Jesse good luck finding God and asks where he'll go next, and Jesse says that they're going to follow the music because all they know is that God likes jazz. That's all they really know, is that jazz is the thing that signals God, and he figures the best place to find God is in New Orleans, because New Orleans, of course, is the state of jazz, and Jesse then gets in the car, uses Genesis to tell Fior to find peace. They drive off, and Ganesh goes to his suite. He looks around at everything that he and Cassidy did, and, uh, I mean, you can tell that this was 
something that really has helped him. He goes to his dressing room. The cowboy then comes in and asks if, there's still, if their deal still holds. And Fior tells him that if he kills Genesis, then he will see his family again. And uh, again, we remember this. We remember that the cowboy, you know, he lost all his family. He's trying to find it again. And... He figures that Jesse will just keep using Genesis and says that he's heading to New Orleans as the cowboy turns to go. Fior tells him he has another job for him because he has to get out. And uh, basically the show begins and Fior goes on stage and the cowboy, you can tell, is on him at this point. So basically, you know, he needs one more thing to do. So the cowboy literally shoots him, killing him for real. So that's the, the basically the one way they could have possibly killed the cowboy is gone. So he leaves and uh, obviously because he was working with the cowboy, he's actually dead. And everyone boos when Fior actually doesn't come back, realizing that, holy shit, he's actually dead this was all not just an act this was actually real and uh that is the way this episode ends fior basically has finally found peace and that's the way this episode ends really great stuff overall but let's just get this episode and where we're gonna go as this season progresses guys like i said this was another really great episode i was overall very um pleased with what we did get here um, but there is a lot of stuff that I definitely do want to talk about. First of all, now that Ganesh is dead, I'm guessing that they're not able to kill the cowboy now, because obviously Ganesh said very well that he's the only one who is able to kill the cowboy, and uh, now that the cowboy has seemingly killed him... Uh, I'm guessing that that's not a possibility. Unless Jesse finds a way to bring him back, I don't know if that's possible, but if he could do it with Eugene, maybe he could do it with Fior, but... The difference is that Jesse is the reason why Eugene was sent to hell. Fior was just off by the cowboy, so I don't think he's coming back from that. Um, but I also don't think that's the end of the character, because we've, we've heard before that angels don't know where they go when they die. So I, I don't know where exactly he goes. I'm guessing he'll be with DeBlanc, but I mean, he found peace, definitely. I just felt like, uh, you know, I, I think it's interesting to see where that's going to go. But now we have an idea what's going on here, that Jesse actually can't use Genesis. I think it's really interesting. It gives him this weakness that he didn't have in Season 1. He's not completely unbeatable because he can't use Genesis, because if he does, then the Cowboy's just going to find him. He can track Genesis very well, and the fact that the Cowboy is taking the time to do something like that, I think it's very interesting. It really to show how um, meticulous uh, the Cowboy has been planning this for a while now. You know, he's wanting to find the preacher so he can find his family, and I love the way that they reminded us of why the Cowboy wanted to do this in the first place. It was all about tracking his family and all that stuff, so I thought that was definitely a very well done reveal. I was very pleased with the way that all went to. I, I just, I really loved um, that, that's, that, that whole uh, backstory that we had with the Cowboy last season. I love that we are still continuing that here. That is definitely something that I definitely really did appreciate. Um, but the other big thing here is Tulip. What the hell is going on with Tulip? I mean, there clearly is something huge that she's keeping from Jesse, and I don't know what exactly that could be, whether uh, her and Gary, they were something involved in uh, Anvil that we didn't know about, or maybe she wasn't just on the run. Maybe there was a lot more to it, because they made us think that she was on the run, but I think there's definitely more to it than that. I think there's something that she needed from Jesse, and I've always kind of suspected... That something's a bit off about Tool. Like, there's something she's keeping from Jesse. And it very much seems like that's the case. There is definitely something that she's hidden from him that we don't know about. And, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen there. Because, you know, Gary's not dead. She just beat him unconscious. So, uh, I don't know where that's gonna go. If we're gonna find out what's going on. But again, there's clearly something huge that Jesse doesn't know about that, uh, Tulip is in fact keeping from both of them, and I don't know what that really means for her. I don't know really what that's all about. Why is she keeping this from them? What that's all about? I'm sure we're gonna find out more later, but right now, I, I have no idea really, uh, where that's gonna go. I think that definitely is gonna be very interesting. Um, and then, I guess the only big thing is God. Obviously, they're going to New Orleans, but what is the connection with God and Jazz? Why is he so obsessed with it? What is that really all about? We now know why God went to the strip club. Like, he did, obviously, to find Jazz because he, you know, he likes Jazz and everything. I think that definitely is very interesting. Um, when all is said and done, though, I do actually have two complaints about this episode. One... I didn't feel that the loss of Anvil uh, plagued these characters enough. I wanted to see a little bit more going on with Jesse, maybe him mourning over Emily or something like that. I know, obviously, 
He's focused on finding God. Um, but the town did blow up, and I, I just felt like there should be a little bit more um, just mourning paid there. And I'm sure we're going to get that. I feel like we are going to get that a little bit later on, especially because Eugene is so part of the story. And Sheriff Root obviously was a big part of Eugene's life. He was his father and all, so I do think we're going to have more there. Um, but the fact he just completely glossed over it I thought was interesting. I mean, I get it. It's like the least of their concerns right now, but I just feel like we could have done a little bit more with that. I did like that scene we got with Tulip, though, where she is mourning... Um, you know, um, I can't even think of his name now. Walter. She is mourning Walter, you know, who really was, like, the only family she had. I think that was definitely really good seeing. But the one thing that Ked did keep me from absolutely loving Ganesh's arc, because I really loved what we got there, is the whole thing with DeBlanc. Uh, in Season 1, both Fior and DeBlanc, correct me if I'm wrong, both of them, whenever you killed them, they were just, you know, they rematerialized, and it was almost as if they never died, and they just came back to life. So why is Fior able to do that and DeBlanc dies? I mean, they didn't really make that very clear. Why is DeBlanc have to die, but Fior gets to come back? I, I don't understand why DeBlanc is permanent. DeBlanc, as I know, wasn't killed by the cowboy, so I don't really understand what that's all about. I get that if you're killed by the cowboy, then you're pretty much dead, but DeBlanc was not killed by the cowboy, so I don't understand why um that would be the case here why does fior get to um you know come back to life but de blanc doesn't i don't think that ex they explain that as well as they maybe could have other than that guys i absolutely love this episode i'm really loving where the season is going it's just a lot of fun so far um and they got me to like Fior more. Like, I thought he was a fun character last season, but again, I didn't really think much of him. Now I actually do. I actually did care about him. I thought they did a good job developing his character here. I just feel like they could have done more between him and DeBlanc. And that's what makes me think his story isn't over, is because we don't exactly know what happened to DeBlanc. Why was he affected and Fior wasn't? I don't really understand that, but... Overall, guys, I definitely really enjoyed this episode, and I'm definitely going to give Preacher Season 1, Episode 2, Mumbai Sky Tower, a 4.5 out of 5, or an A-. minus. So over, guys, from this episode of Preacher, let me know what you guys thought of this episode overall. Love your thoughts on it, guys. I am so close to catching up. I have one more episode left, and that will be in the next episode, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye. Come on, I mean, oh, I swear, baby, at this moment.